Welcome everybody to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski and today we're going to be making a painting together. Or at least I sure hope you make a painting with me. Today we're going to be making a painting by one of the great artists of the 20th century, Marc Chagall, who also happens to be Jewish and today is the first day of Hanukkah. So I'm lighting a couple of candles here to celebrate that great Jewish tradition. And just so happens our show is it falls on this very important holiday or the beginnings of a religious um, time for a great number of people around the world. So yes, Marc Chagall happens to be Jewish and he happens probably to be the most famous Jewish artist of all time. But the other reason why um, you know we're painting one of his works is not only was he Jewish, but he really embraced his Jewish roots and the history and made it a point to celebrate that within his art. At a time, considering you know he's he really achieves his his uh, the greatest his, his 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 great work between World War One and two. You know, it was not particularly a time where being Jewish was something that would, uh, was a positive, like, it, it, most people would sort of go, well, there was a lot of people who went out of their way to deny their Jewish roots in order to survive, quite frankly. And he was very much the opposite direction and really made uh, Jewish iconography and imagery a big part of his artwork. So, let's dive right into this wonderful artist. Um, you can see he, he lived almost a hundred years, I think 97 years. He was born in what is now uh, Belarus and grew up there. I, I believe also spent some time in, in Russia, in Moscow, and was painting great big paintings for some of the ballets and then moved to Paris, uh, I think between the wars and that's sort of where he his his the work that he's really most famous was done and then of course also spent a long time in the United States as well kind of back and forth which a number of artists uh, did especially once he became this global celebrity that uh, enabled him to travel so let's just kind of take a quick look at his bio um, he was born in this small little village his father, uh, I don't know if it was a fisherman, but worked uh, selling fish. So one of the big themes in his, in his art was to include little fishes in his art in order to acknowledge and celebrate his father, which I think is really, uh, you know, a nice touch. And I think it's a, you know, something to think about when you're making art is, and often a lot of artists do this, is include little tiny details in their art that are very personal and maybe no one else gets it well we're going to talk about a few artists in a few other episodes who did things very specifically hidden iconography imagery that would acknowledge their their husband or wife or, or uh, children and i think that's always kind of a little bit um that's kind of a nice little touch kind of a little secret so you know another big thing while he was growing up being jewish a lot of Jewish people were not allowed to go to school or art school. So um, one of the ways that, you know, here, um, here's an interesting quote. And he asked, uh, when Chagall asked a, a schoolmate how he learned to draw, his friend replied, go and find a book in the library, choose any picture you like, and just copy it. <laughs> and isn't that what we're doing right now is we're, we're taking art that we like and then we're trying to reproduce it and in doing so learn how those artists worked we learn a little bit about their style and technique so let's we're, I'll maybe I'll go back to some of his biographical stuff as we go in here and let's get right into the paintings here's just when we type his name into Google images some of the the art we we get and we're gonna look at a few larger ones here in a moment here's a, a picture of him painting away I think one of the, the things that you'll see kind of first off when we look at his art is both the bright colors. We see super high contrasts between yellow and blue and green and red and pink and purple. 
right? So when we think about the color wheel, he's, you know, going, he's on the outside edges of the color wheel a lot of the time. Whereas if we think of like the Mona Lisa, those colors are very close to the neutral core. Right? And if you're like, what is he talking about? Well, t this is episode 27, and we've talked a lot about color and, and mixing color and the neutral core and all those things. We'll talk about that again, uh, but there is some, you know, some of the very first episodes in this series we can kind of dive a little bit deeper into there. So let's look up here. Uh, Wiki Art is a great resource where they, they often have um, really high-resolution images of some of the more well-known paintings around the world. So here's uh, some of his most famous paintings. Um, again, one of the things I think is most amazing about Marc Chagall is the whimsical n nature of his art. And that really also was, you know, contrasted with a lot of the other imagery we would have seen at this time, which was, you know, around 1911 in the, this uh, post World War One era is the rise of Cubism, so you could see he has some Cubist-like motifs and shapes in his art, but there's still this playful aspect to the paintings, which reminds me a lot of children's illustration, children's books, and I was just over you know the past couple of days thinking about him and his art, and I I'm not sure with this, so don't quote me on it, but I do get the feeling that. His art not only impacted, you know, high art, fine art, but children's illustration as well, and sort of broke open the doors as to like what was possible for people to to draw and paint and how to do it, and then that filtered down into the illustration world, uh, because you're going to see here we've got lots of people defying physics, like flying around, floating through the air. Um, flying through the air, flying above things. Literally, here's uh, the, this famous painting, The Fiddler, which was the inspiration for, of the the um, the, theatri the the play Fiddler on the Roof, right? It was inspired by this because here we've got this guy standing on the roof of this house, which is, you know, smaller than his fiddle, right? So there's all these, you know, um, he's really breaking all all the rules right and like you it, it doesn't make sense for somebody to be five times taller than a building and having one foot taking up half of the the roof of a building right that just doesn't make any sense or for these two people to be flying over the town um let me see is there more stuff down here we'll look at all of those works um uh, so anyway we'll talk about more about his art as we get into it here is the painting that we're going to be painting today. And this painting is in the Albertina Museum in Vienna, um, which is a great museum if you're in that area when the world gets back to normal. Um, and before we even get right into that, I'll just mention that there is a link in the video description below to the Dropbox. And in the Dropbox, I've put in a Let's see, will this open here? So here's the image and then an outline in JPEG and PDF. So you could print that off and then and then transfer that image onto Canvas if you wanted to get as close as possible to the original, which, uh, so this is what, if you, down, if you go to the website, you can download this for free and print it out and then use some, if you watched even just the previous episode, you see how we can transfer that image onto canvas. And so here's the painting itself that we're going to be working on. I'm not going to be using the transfer method. I'm going to draw this out straight by eye onto the canvas. Um, and so that if you, if you don't want to use that technique, you don't have to. Uh, because I also think part of his work is this... Um, he is certainly not concerned with um, making images that that look realistic. He was not a realist painter or a photorealist painter. He was not someone who was interested in capturing a likeness, right? Painting somebody that, painting a picture of somebody that looks photographically like they actually are. 
not concerned with that whatsoever. In fact, his figures look, you know, they 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 look very cartoony and and they 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 bend in ways that our bodies can't go. As I said, they fly through the air, twist in ways that is just not possible, right? And so his sometimes the figures' their arms and legs are longer or shorter, or wider or thinner, heads bigger or smaller, all those kind of things. So he threw all the rules out the window. So it's this kind of thing that some people really appreciate and some people don't, right? It's so he is somebody who definitely straddles. He's he's controversial in the sense that. In, in, in a different way than maybe Picasso would be, who uh, made great art, but in his personal life was a, was a sleaze bag at the very least. Um, but Marc Chagall's maybe controversial because his work, you know, he might be sort of the poster boy for my kid could do that kind of thing um, before Jackson Pollock started splattering paint on the floor because his paintings have a very childlike kind of quality right or some people might call naive or or similar to like outsider art now we look we saw briefly there a few paintings that he made when he eventually was accepted into an art school in paris and he clearly could paint he could paint people very very well but he threw because i think also going back to his interest in judaism and his his culture he was really interested in folk art and and folk culture which you know is often described as art made by people who don't have a formal art education and you know some of those figures are quote unquote awkward or out of proportion and i think he really looked at those and felt like there was a kind of honesty to that um that of people just expressing themselves without any kind of fear of being right or doing it wrong, that they just were like, oh, I don't know how to paint people, but I still love painting, so I'm going to make a painting. And I think he really identified with that. And I think he even may have seen that, um, especially because Jewish people weren't allowed to go to um, school and train in the traditional way, that they had to kind of teach themselves how to do things. So I think, I mean, I'm a little bit speculating here, but I do f just get the sense that that was part of how, of, of ideas that he wanted to incorporate into his art. Now, a couple of little things just before we jump into that. One of the, the occur reoccurring themes over the past few weeks has been from people saying, I can't find the canvas boards anywhere. They're all sold out. I, I like to think it's because there's so many people taking these classes right now. But if you can't get your, your uh, uh, canvases from the dollar store, right, the, the ones... The one that I'm going to be painting on today is a canvas that I bought for a dollar at the dollar store, and it, it's going to work perfectly fine. But if you can't find any of those, and I'll put links to these in the video description afterwards, is a couple of 12, I think these look a little bit, I think this is 12 pack, or this one, how many do I have in here? This 14 pack and a 12 pack that I ordered off Amazon, and they're going to work great, and I suspect are a little bit higher quality. They're almost exactly double the price, so instead of a dollar, two dollars a canvas. But um, I, I do think that in terms of quality, I feel like there they're, they're might be, like they claim that they're archival and that they're not gonna fall apart, which, you know, cheap, you know, you get something from the dollar store, you sort of get what you pay for, right? And I keep telling people, you know, to, to use the, the least expensive materials possible when you get started because, let me see, I'll put these down on the table so people can kind of see. Um, I do encourage people to use the, the least expensive materials possible when you're first learning so that you've just, you do feel a sense of freedom and you're not so worried about, you know, oh, I spent $20 on this one canvas. If it doesn't turn out, then all that money is out the door. Whereas if you make a, a painting you don't like, a quote-unquote bad painting on a $1 canvas, well, you know, you're, it's kind of like, yeah, I probably spent five times that on coffee, you know, before work, you know, in the morning, right? So, but um, as you start progressing, and, you know, now we're, we're over halfway through this class, getting some canvases that might be not too much more. We're still talking $2 a canvas you know, that might last a, a lot longer 
it might you might start also taking yourself a little bit more seriously and you might start like oh you know what i'm feeling i'm getting more more confident well maybe maybe up the the quality of the material slightly the paint that we're using so far is going to is still fantastic for for our uses so um i'll put again those these links in the description Oh, another thing that I'm going to suggest, because we're going to use these materials in a little bit, is getting some medium. You can get, there's matte medium and gloss medium. And every brand of acrylic paint makes something like this. You can see this is a, a bigger jug, 28 bucks. And then this one was, I don't know if there's a price tag on here, would have been probably $10 because it's probably half the size. So um, the we're going to use matte medium when we do the Bridget Riley paintings in, I think, next week. Would that be? When is that? Uh, I don't have my schedule up here anymore. But um, we're going to be using matte, probably, it doesn't matter, matte medium or gloss medium, probably matte medium is what I use more frequently. I tend to like less gloss on my paintings. Some people really like super shiny paintings. So if you do that, you could get a gloss medium. Um, and they come in small, they even I'm sure they probably even come in smaller tubes than this. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a heads up that if you want to order something like this, maybe I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Peter says here, this pack of nicer canvases looks good to me because I've been to four dollar stores and they're all sold out, right? So um, having a little bit higher quality materials that you can order and that you can actually find might be something to really think about. Um, oh, Deborah's got her husband Rick painting with her today. Hi, Rick. Thanks for joining us today. You'll find a little bit about what your wife's been up to this past little while. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get right into this here. Where's my fuse? Okay, so before we start painting, I'm getting. I'll get all the materials out here in a second. Let's just take a look at the painting itself and see if we can start to kind of deduce what's going on. And I haven't had a chance to really think too much about how to make this painting myself. So I'm right here with you guys and I'll you know, give you a little bit of, of uh, insight into how I think before I make this painting. We'll talk about how to draw all this out um, as we go, but in terms of colors, we see it looks like, oops, and I don't have a, uh, a high resolution. You can see it already kind of pixelating a little bit, but it does look like we have looks like the, the whole background could have been painted with a light blue um, and probably dividing between a cool blue and then a warmer blue down here. So the other thing that's going to be fun about this painting is we can be a little bit quote unquote sloppy as we paint it because he's working pretty quickly. Like you could feel like the the especially in these flowers here there's a uh, a almost frantic quality with the way that it's painted like he's you could feel that he's just sort of zipping around here and so that speed of the brush stroke is going to be something we're going to try to do ourselves as we paint this painting okay so let's bring zoom back out a bit and let's get the materials out and we're going to get our canvas prepped ready okay so we've got some sort of uh, palette to put our paint on and we've talked about that before so I won't go into it I'm gonna s I've pre gessoed and I know I talk about this each time but I assume that not everybody's watched so I've, I took my $1 canvas and then I took this maybe $10, depending on where you are or, or what brand, it could be between $10 and $25 for uh, a little 
bottle of gesso like this. And I just took a paintbrush, brushed it right onto the surface. Not too thick, and you could still, there might be some lines that you see through here because it is basically, basically what this gesso is, is it's matte medium with plaster powder. That's an way oversimplification, but just for our purposes, it's basically this matte medium, which will dry totally clear with like plaster dust, right? If you've ever um, played with plaster as a kid or had your arm broken um, when you were younger and they, they wrapped it with like pl that plaster gauze, basically it's that kind of stuff. And then so what it does is it helps fill in all the little gaps um, in the weave of the canvas. So let's get all our paints out. We're probably going to use almost all of those colors today. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got this gessoed. It's, it, I did this a couple of episodes ago, so it's, it's fully dried. The longer you leave it to dry, the better. And then you could either wipe it with a damp cloth or like I like to do, just wipe it on my painting shirt. And I know it just seems kind of silly, but I, for, for me, when I, I get my painting clothes a little bit dirty, it, it, it frees me up. Like if I've already got paint on here, I've got some dust all over it. It's like, you know what? I'm okay. It's okay if I get dirty because I'm already dirty. Because sometimes when we're painting, we get really afraid of the little bits of paint that are on our fingers. So let's, uh, we're going to draw this out onto the canvas and then we're going to paint it. So here's the original painting side by side with my canvas. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide the canvas in half. And it kind of looks like somewhere around here is the middle of this painting. So let's just draw a line all the way across. You probably want to draw yours much more lightly than I'm drawing mine, just so that if you want to erase things, it's, it's not too difficult to do so. So there's the middle of this picture, right? Corresponding with the middle of the picture here on the screen. So, um, that kind of looks like we've got, there's like a horizon line in between here or, or right below it. So let's just draw another line down here. And before things get too crazy, I'm just going to erase this middle line, that the first line I drew. And don't worry about getting this too dirty as we go because we're going to cover this whole thing with paint. So no big deal, right? Okay, the next thing is this looks like, and I'll even just sort of draw this in here. We've got this big area is where those flowers are going to go. And we're not, uh, we'll, we'll get into the design of those flowers in a moment. But the vase for the flowers, let's say if this is the middle point, right? And let's say we kind of divide halfway in between here. We imagine this would be kind of the vase, and that's the middle of the vase. So let's draw kind of a, a vase around here. All right, it kind of disappears up into those flowers. All right, so I can erase that line a little bit. Okay. Next thing is there is this it looks kind of like there's a little tree or something here that this woman might be sleeping next to. We, uh, it, It's very subtle, and I could imagine possibly getting rid of that tree, if you like. If you see the my uh, drawing here on this page, right? So here's kind of the, the outline version of it. And I, I've kind of, I've still drawn it in there, but I could imagine you getting rid of it if you didn't want it there. Um, you know, I, we could put this up here for, 
when we draw this woman, because it's a little bit hard, it actually took me a, a little bit to actually see where she was, or like some of the details in here. So let's, well, let's imagine we've got a line going right across here, because she's sort of sleeping on this, this kind of hillside, it looks like, right? In fact, let's do the same thing. We've got another hillside kind of going down this way. So, if we imagine that this woman's body is going to sort of fall between this line and kind of right around here, right? We want her whole body to fit into this kind of package, right? If we kind of just block out that space. And then, if we were to divide that in half, right? So we're going to kind of go, her, her dress sort of is a little bit higher than half. So if we imagine this is her dress, and then we've got some feet here. All right. So this is her dress coming all the way up to here. And then let's say I put her head right here. All right. And so here's her chest right here. And then let's just do this kind of arc for her arm. And this is the inner part of her arm. And this part of her arm. So we've got a hand. I'm not even going to be too worried about trying to draw that hand properly. And then I'm just going to kind of adjust. Oops, it's a little funky. But again, we're going to paint over this whole thing a little bit anyway. Okay, so this is now this hand comes up over her head here. It's because she's kind of holding her hair, and, and we've got an eye. Okay. All right, so you can see it's, it's a little bit harder to see in the actual painting what's going on. That's why it might be helpful to see this. And then in the background here, we have some kind of building oh, maybe that's on some kind of there's some kind of hill or uh, I'm not sure exactly what this is like an, almost like a castle or something so I'm just gonna very quickly lay out what some of this is okay now the other big thing with this picture here is we have this there's a kind of I don't know if it's a sun or moon or maybe this is a, a, another planet like Venus maybe up in the sky and we've got this it looks like some kind of like a, a horse or a dragon up here And it kind of swirls down here. I don't know if this is the tail, but... Okay. And then it looks like there's the, another woman up here who's sort of embracing this dragon. All right, with big, dark hair. Something like that. Right, we're going to paint over everything here. So even if you make a mistake and you got to erase something or move things, it's going to be totally fine. Um, okay, so in these flowers now, let's just kind of, we're, again, you can see in my version here, there might be a lot of detail, stuff that you don't really need to, to draw. So I'm going to keep things kind of simple here. So I'm going to just draw out some general shapes of where some of these flowers are going to go. going to be a big thing of white and another big thing of white in here. Right? It sort of looks like a, a big cookie or something, right? <laughs> it's just this kind of big blob. And that's fine. We don't need anything more than a big blob up there anyway. 
So, I think... I think this is more than enough to get us started. You know, there's this kind of grass shape down there. We could do a whole bunch more little details, but I don't think it's it would help us in any way. In fact, I think the more drawing we put down on this painting, the more it's just going to slow us right down. So, let's get our paints out and start mixing some colors. So, let me just see. Okay. Where's my palette? Okay, here's my palette. And as you've seen, I've, I've labeled it just like our, our color wheel. All right, so we're gonna put the colors in the same places here. Our two yellows, our two reds, and our two blues. All right, so let's get all these paints on here. And I is always put about as much as I put on my toothpaste because I don't wanna waste too much paint if I can avoid it. This is my warm red. You also see it's kind of rubbing off, but I also label these paints so warm, warm, right? I put it because um, sometimes when you're in the midst of painting, you you kind of get distracted and you forget, you know, what your what paint you're reaching for. And anything that I can do to simplify my life and make the process easier and get rid of any confusion, I'm all for it, right? Okay. Um, and I don't think we're going to need any black today. So, we're, I think we're just going to keep it more of like an impressionist's palette, right? So, we're going to make the, our black ourselves with a really, really dark color. And I think that's another feature of his paintings is the brightness to it, right? And thinking about like Hanukkah and the lighting of the menorah and the... And the um, the idea of bringing light into places that are dark, right? I think that fits really, really well. You know, not only for the times that we're living in right now, but also just I think it's a theme in his art is this idea of of turning towards the the more positive things in life in general, right? And trying to keep things really bright whenever possible. Um, to get through the dark times. Okay, so we've got our palette here. I'll get our painting back out. Let's put this under here. And let's mix our, our first colors. Okay. So I'm going to use a, a thicker, one of the wider brushes. And, you know, one of, especially when you're using a cheap brush, one of the first things I tend to do is kind of go through and just see if there's, if I could just l delicately, I'm not yanking, but seeing sometimes there's in, with cheaper brushes, and this is, you know, we're, we're a couple months into painting a couple times a week, and sometimes these cheaper brushes start to fall apart. So I just want to make sure there's no stray hairs going to come out in the middle of my painting. Okay, so I've got my, my water, and, you know, just a quick little, um, I want to respond to a something that, Peter left in the comments for the last episode just about water and asking like how many times I clean the water and uh, because you've probably noticed I mean I'm tethered here with my microphone to the table so I'm not going and changing my water all the time most of the time my water is relatively clean it might look dirty after I clean my brushes in there but one of the things that I, I almost always do I probably you've probably see me forget to do it a few times but usually I wipe my brush off try to get as much paint off and then I rub it into the water to get the last little bit off so not that I'd want to drink the water at the end of a painting session because there is still some uh, paint in there but if I was to pour my dirty water over top of a blank canvas afterwards and let it dry it would stain it the color would change it's not going to be invisible but it's unlikely that it would be a, like a really bright, radically bright color because there's actually very little pigment in here. Most of the, of the paint gets onto my rag. Anyway, 
just wanted to say that. And again, thanks, Peter, for all the great questions that you're asking me. I, I appreciate those. They really make me think. So what we want to do is we want to get, we're going to first start out with a cool blue in the background, right? And potentially, I think he may even have I think he probably, to make this painting, actually painted the entire painting a cool blue to get started. We're going to try to make this painting in about an hour and a half, so we might have, we're going to cut a few corners here, so I don't think we're going to paint the whole painting that color. Um, so we're, we'll do the background though. So our cool blue, we're going to take some cool blue on our brush. Now if I paint this color directly here, it's going to be just too intense and too dark as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot of white here. I'm going to light, lighten this color up. And then I'm going to take some water because we're going to do what's called a wash. And this is often what uh, artists will do is do a little wash on the canvas before we start painting. So I've got that water mixing it in and trying to get it into the bristles of the paint because I don't want like the, my first stroke to be really thick covered with paint and then it to kind of thin out as I go. I want it to kind of try to be even if I can. So if we look at this, and I'll just go back to this painting. I'm going to take this here and I'm just going to brush over a lot of this here let's go right down to this building here and i'm I, you can even go over top of some of these things don't worry about making it perfect okay try to preserve this shape in here or whatever it might happen to be. Okay. Okay, so that's, that would be the kind of the first step. And then I can get a little bit more in my brush. And then let's just give it a little bit more nuance. I'm going to come in here. just just so I don't have one big blob white shape here I'm just gonna come in maybe just a little bit over these edges in fact I'm gonna come down here because you know sometimes with a glass vase or any kind of glass, you're going to get all sorts of weird reflections. So a little bit coming in some of these sides is not going to hurt. Okay. And, you know, I'm just going to even add a couple of little spots inside here. And again, he would have probably painted this entire canvas this light blue. But for our sake, um, I'm just going to go a little, a little bit faster here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to paint this warmer blue down here. And it's going to be very, very, very similar color. But because I want it to come forward... I want to use every tool possible to um, help create space in this picture and having the sky go backwards and the ground come forwards is going to be important. So as I said, I'm just going to clean my brush off, wipe as much paint off as I can. All right, so this water now appears very blue, but you know, if I, right? And that even that water will draw it when it dries off will go pretty clear 
Okay, next step is we're going to do the same thing, but with the warm blue. So take a big, nice, healthy scoop of white and some blue. Right, you can see the difference between these two, right? And what I would also hope you see is that this, even just adding a bit of white to this ultramarine blue, our warm blue, starts to look a little bit purpley. Right? Can you almost see that it's... I haven't added any red to it whatsoever, but it's good. that would help it make that leap to the cool red if I wanted to make a purple. Anyway, let's do the same thing. Let's add some uh, water in here. Okay. I might need just a little bit more. I'm going to mix this before I start painting here. Okay, just trying to make, again, make sure I got it evenly distributed inside the paint itself. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this and brush this across this whole painting surface. And I can still see the lines that I've drawn on earlier. I'm also where it meets this blue. I'm just going to kind of overlap a little bit so that I get rid of most of the white on the canvas. And then I also like making sure my sides are have got a little bit of paint on them. So. Okay, so already the painting kind of, we've got some things blocked in here. Maybe I'll even put a little bit of this same color into the vase in a few different places and into these flowers. Let's just and I'm kind of doing this pretty randomly, so Okay, so here's this is the, our beginnings of our underpainting. And I already feel pretty good about this. Okay. I think, and let, you know, again, if we look at the original, right, you're like, oh, I don't know. I feel pretty far away, Michael. I, I don't know where this is. But as you've seen in some of the previous episodes, things come together pretty quickly, especially once we've got a good underpainting established. So, the next thing I think I want to do, while I've got all of these paints out, I think, you know, ideally what we would do is we would let this dry completely before we start painting on it. So, what I'm going to do is try to find areas of this painting that I can lay some color down where it's not going to mix with these paints, that, the first layers. So one of the things that I could do is I see some red in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a little bit of red into the sky and maybe a few little touches into the flowers. So the paint I'm going to use for that is I'm going to take, well, let's just see. We'll, let's, we'll, we'll do a little um, a, t a test here. Let's get a couple of other brushes out here. So if we take this cool red, and likewise if we add a little bit of white to it, we have this kind of a pinkish color. Let's put this brush down. And then let's do this again with we'll take some white and add some of this. See how they're they're two slightly different reds, right? The the cool red with white 
starts to go pink very quickly. The warm red with white, it goes, I, I wouldn't call this a pink. I mean, it probably it might look pink on the screen. To me, this looks more like a pastel red, right? So um, a different kind of, of red, right? One's more pink, one is more pastel. Um, so what we want to do is we want to put our cooler colors in the background. So I'm going to take this pink kind of color and let's just apply it right in here. I probably should have added a little bit of water just to dilute that a bit. I'm going to take that. And then I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit over top of this blue. And not only that, I'm going to wipe my brush off so it's dry. And then I'm going to take this dry brush and I'm going to, it's getting wet as I, as I wipe it into this paint. But you see I'm kind of brushing it outwards. I'm kind of scrubbing the surface here to help integrate it with so it's not such a hard line between blue and pink. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be too too perfect and clean because we're going to add a little bit more layer there afterwards. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of that color back there later on, but we'll get to that when we get to it, right? So now I'm going to take my the other red that I added white to, right, the little bit more pastel one. Let's add a little bit of water to this. And I'm just going to take this and add it throughout here a little bit. And you see how I'm kind of just dabbing things around a little bit? I'm not being too scientific in, at all, right? I'm helping to kind of, this is part of the underpainting of this painting and giving it a little bit of that extra feeling. Even, do I want to go down here already? I might save this for a little bit later. Looking at the painting, again, just making sure, seeing where I want to add anything more. I feel that's good enough to get us get us going okay so the next thing I want to do is this everything's still a little bit wet so I'm gonna now put a little bit of green into this painting now we've talked before about different kinds of green and which because we know that blue and red or sorry we know that blue and yellow are gonna make green but as we've looked at before we can get different kinds of green right so if we mix the cool blue with the cool yellow We'll get this big, bright lime green, right? Which are uh, gorgeous colors. And maybe we'll have a little tiny bit of those in there, but we don't want too much because these flowers are in the middle ground slash foreground. And if we put too much cool green in here, it's going to want to make these flowers go backwards. And we kind of want them, we don't want it to come leaping forward, but we don't want it to um, go too far back either. We kind of want it to float in the middle. Right, so we want something that's maybe closer into this area here. So I'm thinking about adding a little bit of the warm yellow and the cool blue for this wash. Okay, so pick up my palette here. What I'm going to do is take some of this a little bit of the cool blue to start and then my warm yellow take a little scoop of that 
So this is, I really like this color. It's, it's bright, but not as like saturated, like as the cool yellow would be. All right. So let's take this again. I'm going to add a little bit of water on my brush here. Not a lot, but just a little bit. This again, this is for my washes and I want my washes to be the, the, the water thins it down a little bit just to make it a little bit more transparent. So I can kind of use these brush strokes to act a little bit like leaves or parts of, a, of this plant and this flower, right? And it's okay to kind of overlap, especially in some places where maybe there aren't any any uh, leaves or flowers, just because it'll actually give it uh, that extra layer of complexity. Right, do you start seeing like it felt like we were pretty far away and all of a sudden we just start putting a few colors in and it's like oh okay I just feel it's starting to come together this feels good okay so we've got a bunch of these in here now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue to this mixture Not a lot, just a little tiny dabs of it. And now I can go back into some of these areas. We're just kind of building up some of the textures and colors in here. So I'm not going all over the place, but just a few little places there. Okay, so we got that. And you know what? I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do a little bit of this. Um, down in here. So this little tree that's here. So we have this kind of hillside coming, oops, let me push that back up here. This hillside that is kind of sloping down this way. And then we've got this other kind of thing happening over here. Another hill kind of, it looks like the hill kind of comes down and then up again. Pretty good so far. Now, how are things going? It looks like all my layers of paint, the, the blues that I originally painted are dry. Just holding, you know, I tilt the painting up on angles like this, and that just allows me to see what is like, there's a little bit of reflection there. I mean, it's still a little bit wet, but otherwise everything else pretty dry, which is great. Okay. I guess let's just keep on going here. We're gonna 
Now, let's go into the, we're going to take the, we're going to have some warmer greens in here now. We've got a lot of kind of, kind of, uh, I guess, neutral green, I guess, where we've got this, cool, we have a cooler, bl cooler blue mixed in with the warm yellow. So we've got this bit of, um, you know, half and half, cool and warm together, which kind of neutralize one another. So now we're going to take, and I'm not even going to really bother washing my brush here. I'm going to take some warm blue and mix it here with my warm yellow. All right, so you can see very different kind of, just by using a different blue, we're getting a, a very different kind of green. Okay. So I'll take this paint. Let's look at the original here. And then start applying some of this. And as I always say, I'm not really interested in reproducing the original painting. I'm just using it as inspiration. So feel free to, you know, take your you know, if, if something inspiration hits you and you want to kind of replace some of the flowers with different kinds of flowers that you really like, it's your painting after all, right? It might be originally based on a Chagall painting, but at the end of the day, this is your painting. So feel free to take as many liberties as you like. Man, these scented candles are making me hungry. <laughs> I never didn't really think of. Uh, I might have to. I have a, a little energy bar. I sometimes bring down here just in case I need uh, something to help me power through. I have to dip into that. Okay. It's got a little bit of. Some green, right? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay, now I am going to just wash my brush off. Take a sip of tea. <laughs> okay, I am gonna have a little snack here because those scented candles are. You're gonna start hearing my stomach growling here shortly. Hmm. Okay, so my next thing to do is I'm going to use some um, cool blue up in the sky and some warm blue down below. Okay. So I'm going to put some cool blue up here not too much of it hmm. and then some warm blue down here sorry just let's just look at this here 
I'm just thinking, okay, so what I'm going to do is take my cool blue again. And this might be too intense if I just start painting that right down there. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. Not as much as our first wash. I want it to be integrated into there. And now let's... And we've got this... The hair on this woman here. I'm just going to... Outline a few little things. I want to keep it pretty subtle. In fact, that's almost more than it should be. I'm just kind of outlining some of my pencil marks. And you could turn this creature, whatever it is, into anything. It could be a My Little Pony doll, or um, a, it could be a, a, a dragon blowing fire, if you like. I think it's supposed to be whatever this this woman down here is dreaming about. Maybe she's dreaming of flowers and these things in the sky. I wasn't really able to find too much info about the actual painting itself, so. Uh, your guess is as good as mine as, the, as what is actually happening in here. Let's um let's now I'm gonna take this same cool blue that I have and getting a little bit more of it on my brush. And now I'm just gonna be a little bit more bold and come into the painting a bit. You'll notice that there's a lot of very fine details here, which we're going to do at the very, very last little bit. Like there's going to be some, um, you could even, well, you could use a pencil or a pen, a Sharpie at the very end to do some of that, but we'll try to do it with a paintbrush. But if you were painting with really little kids, you could use a paint, um, Sharpies or pencils to help with some of that if you like. Or even, you know, you could use a, a blue colored pencil to do some of this stuff if painting it with a paintbrush is too difficult. Lots of solutions. You know, whatever works. You know, I find this tree drives me a little bit nuts. I was really contemplating getting rid of it, but uh, it's there now, so we'll deal with it. So we've got, still using my cool blue, and it's a fairly dry brush. So I'm just going to kind of outline a bunch of some kind of buildings or something going on down here. I'm not really sure. Which, you know, kind of fits with, if you know, with dreams and how kind of a little bit murky they are. And what is it that we're 
dreaming about and you know a great movie for that is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind if you yeah some like really great I wouldn't well they're kind of dream sequences but they're also like just sort of showing how memory works and there's times you know they're walking through a library and there's a whole bunch of books on the shelves but they don't have any titles or words on them and um Which is a good little trick if you're interested in learning a little bit about how to do any lucid dreaming and taking a little bit of control over your dreams is to, if you do find yourself in a dream and you, you're, you're looking at a, a book or you're, you're in line to a movie, is to like really try to, f try to focus on what, I what is the movie that I'm about to go to in my dream? What is, you know, and often by forcing your mind to kind of it's a one way of kind of being being more conscious while you dream okay I'm liking all of this so far everything's slowly coming together now we're going to go a little bit more bold and start putting in some of the warm blues down below here so i got this dark warm blue I'm not I don't want to go if I take this right out and start painting with it it's gonna be too intense so I'm just taking a little bit out with it, this tiny bit of, of um, uh, white and some water that was there so just gonna use that Just sort of outlining some of this, the vase here. And it might be worth having a smaller brush. Now. So I'm just going to take a much smaller brush and dig into here and do a little bit of the outlining of this figure. So using a brush to do kind of fine details is tricky. Um, and often the first number of times you do this, you make mistakes and it doesn't really feel like you've got much accuracy and it's kind of frustrating. I totally, totally identify with that. It's a, it's a learned skill and it just takes some time and you have to be a little easy on yourself when you do it and not get so worked up about it looking perfect and not looking um, or not not looking perfect I mean another thing when you're painting fingers is sometimes it's a count one two three four sometimes I've done that and then and very happy with it and then showing it and be like, oh, it looks like you're missing a few fingers. Oh yeah, I'm not painting a cartoon character. <laughs> um, now I may need to go back over some of these lines later um, as I continue painting it, but what's gonna be kind of nice is if I have some of this down now, and I use a slightly different color later, like a purple or a red, or even a different blue or, or darker blue, lighter blue, then it, 
then we have multiple colors overlapping, describing the same thing, and that's going to give more dimension to those areas. feeling pretty good okay so I'm just gonna keep using the same color notice again it's not I haven't gone full ultramarine blue I still have a little bit of white in here and that's particularly helpful when I'm going deeper into space into the darker parts of the painting or sorry into the, further into the background because we would expect there to be a little bit more kind of um, white because we have the atmosphere separating us between these the uh these between from her to here there's going to be more and more white added to the color all right so you see i'm kind of going overlapping some of the things i, I painted earlier and so i could see some people feeling well you're just wasting your time why didn't you use that color to begin with, why put, you know, go all that trouble to paint something and make it look really nice, and then 20 minutes later paint right over top of it with a, a different color or slightly different color? Well, the, the point is, is that we, we want it, um, uh, we, we want to build in some complexity into some of those areas, and part of that is having multiple colors sort of um as like part of the structure that support one another okay okay so i'm bringing up still with the warm blue now i'm going to kind of go around with the same bit of like again it's it's uh, it's got some white in it so it's not so intense because later on I can go back over top and around some of this stuff with darker blues and it's going to look really nice Another thing you can do is to help kind of, you, you may find it more, you might may, may enjoy it or may not, but you can see like kind of how I'm moving my hand up and down on the brush, right? And kind of at different times going way back up. And it just, what that does is First of all, you're going to have a different kind of mark making. You'll be kind of uh, a little bit more liberated and just sort of feel like you can be a little bit wilder. You lose a little bit of control, for sure. Um, but uh, I don't know. I really, it's, I really like holding my brush up a little bit higher and away from the canvas whenever possible. Okay. So let's do this same thing. We're now going to take a bit more. Where am I? 
I'm going to go a little bit darker with this blue. With the warm blue here. Not full on. I'm still mixing it back into here where I got a little bit of white. But just sort of deepening some of the, the darkness. I see I'm outlining some things I had before. So I'm not going over all of the lines, just sort of if I imagine, let's say light is coming from the top right, it's kind of hitting here, where would the, the darker side would be on the bottom side of her body here. Okay, same thing. Actually, let's go into... That's a little bit too intense, but it's okay. Some of these darker, I just, we're going to, in a short couple minutes here, I'm going to kind of almost like put more washes back over top of this surface here. So, just building up a little bit of these textures. Okay. So I've been using this little tiny brush for a while. Let's go back to a little bit bigger brush. Okay. It's a little bit of, oh, this one should be cleaned. Yeah, sometimes I get, uh, I'm not paying attention and I just put a, a wet brush down so the minute I notice that, I should be cleaning them so they don't get all clogged up. Okay. Um, okay. So this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some of this warm blue. And let's just maybe put it in the middle. And I'm going to add just some water to it so let me just so i'm diluting the paint Okay, so now I got this color. And then I'm gonna do a bit of a dry brush technique here. I'll show you how, how we do this. Maybe we'll go. I wanna show you that. Maybe I'll show you this view here. Right from above. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got this, this is the paint I just mixed up here. Some of the ultramarine blue and water, nothing else. All right, and I'm just going to wipe 
So I'll do sorry, I'll do that again. I got this here. And then I'm just gonna wipe a lot of it off here. And then I'm gonna just go into the painting. That didn't work very well. Brush, actually, you know what? This brush is not the best brush. Let's get one that's maybe even a little bit an older brush. It's a little bit frazzled. It works kind of well for a dry brush technique. One that doesn't have such big points on it. Okay, here's, here's one, a little flat brush. Right, so can you see that brush? A little flat, flat end. Okay, so let's let's do all this again. Got this paint on my brush. And then I just wipe a bit off. And then I'm gonna go back over some areas here. Alright, dip it back in. Right, so it's literally a dry brush, and I can take it and I can kind of just dry it off on the surface. Let's keep on going around here. And it might pick up some of the paint that's already there. That's fine. The point is just not having a brush that's like drip, that's really wet. We're kind of like scrubbing into the surface. And this allows us to get a pretty subtle effect. Right, where it's it's barely kind of ch it's like I'm kind of staining the surface a little bit. It's a lot like a wash, but if my brush is is dry as opposed to wet, like a wash, like a, like a wet paintbrush is gonna um, can activate the paint that's already there and make it it wet again and start blending. I don't really want that. I'm trying to layer this paint over the surface to kind of create some different areas of darkness. So it's a pretty subtle effect. So this is a great way, if you've got a painting that is just like a little bit too, it needs a little bit more of one color and you're like afraid to put more on, doing a bit of this dry brush technique into some of those areas to darken some part very subtly works really, really well. So I'm gonna keep on keep on going here. I can keep now building up in certain places where I feel it needs to get darker and darker and darker. And maybe in a few places now I'm just gonna Places where I feel it needs to get much darker, so just in terms of time, I'm going to kind of just skip a little bit of the dry brush and just start applying some of that paint into those areas. But it's still using this the the watered down paint, acting a little bit almost like watercolor, can help me just add a, do this in a much more subtle way. And now I don't have to be so worried about getting it perfect. 
because I'm not using like a, a like the paint at its full strength, right? Okay. So, what else do I want to do here? It's time to take some tea, a tea break. <laughs> Let's look at the original again. Okay, so you could see we could can really continue building up these the darker areas and we need to darken in here a little bit so let's we can basically do the same thing let's take some of this warm red and I'm gonna get maybe I'll do this again on the big screen here so let's move this over so I'm gonna take my warm red getting some Let's fit in there. Some water on this red. All right, brushing it off. And now in her shirt, she's got Notice how just kind of nice and subtle that is. It's just, it's not like, like even just here on these boots. Just because there's bare, and I, I don't think, you know, in her, in, in the original painting, there's not so much red on there, but uh, let's keep on going here. Okay. There's also a little bit up here, but I want that to be the cool red. So let's clean this off, my brush a bit. And then let's do the same thing with the cool red. I find this super satisfying because it's just, it's so subtle, right? Just this almost indecipher, like, like if you show this to like some, some other people who really don't know how to paint very well, like, oh, how did you get, like, how did you get such a, because they might spend a long time trying to mix this color right here. And it would just drive them crazy and they're adding white to the color and the color keeps getting more and more pastel-like. Okay, I'm gonna do the same. Let's go back into this area up here. Just gonna add a little bit more red right off there. Let's see. We might need to go in here and touch this up and darken the center as we go, but we'll get there as we go. Okay. Um, I really feel like I need to get more of the darker ultramarine blue into this painting. And again, I'm gonna do this with the dry brush technique but rather than putting water on my brush now, I'm just gonna go directly rubbing some of them off. And this way it's gonna go darker much faster. All right, so just so you can see what I'm up to.
So a little bit about this, you know, this kind of painting process is a little bit, depending on how you, on how you do it, it can't, it, it has the appearance of being both very fast and spontaneous, and then doing what we're doing right now is kind of slow and, and, um, but this is an opportunity, this allows you to, to be kind of both spontaneous and then because you're not putting a lot of paint down on the canvas at one time, you, the stakes are pretty low, right? So that the, the chances that you're going to ruin the painting when you're putting very little paint on it at any one time is pretty low. Which I think is, is good for beginner artists, right? Because you, you, the, you're just, a, lo a lot of people can be very tentative as they work, so dry brush technique um, allows you to kind of, again, you can move kind of quickly and slowly at the same time. Like you, a lot of fast brush strokes, but their appearance is kind of hidden a little bit. Take some of that and go back up into these, to the flowers, which we've kind of neglected for a little bit. So, get some yellows up here next. Um, Okay, what do I want to do now? Let's um, let's let's work on the on the the flowers up here for a bit. We've been kind of down here for a little while, so I want to move away from there and get into the to the flowers. So let's wash our brush off. Wonder how everyone's doing there with their paintings, how they're turning out. Um, Chagall is a great person to look at for 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 painting, just because of how playful, how how sort of ambivalent he is about accuracy, and so you could easily kind of spend a long time kind of working through a number of his paintings, and I think you would find by the end like. Wow, this is like I, f I have a lot more confidence because I've been studying from somebody who has sort of thrown all the rules out, right? Like this figure down here is, you know, it's it. Um, we didn't really spend too much time trying to draw it properly, right? So that I think is should be liberating for many of you. Okay, so let's go up into these um, flowers. We need some. Uh, let's try the the warm yellow. And let's see how this looks. All right, I'm just kind of dabbing it in there. We don't want to do too much. This yellow is, is pretty intense compared to all of the blues on here. We, and if we put too much yellow on here, it could get kind of garish pretty quickly. So I want to have a little bit of restraint. <laughs> um, that feels pretty good. I'm kind of pretty happy with the way things are going right now. Um... Okay, so I'm just going to clean that, this brush off. I think
think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a little bit of the cool blue into the sky, like the dry brush in the in the sky here for a second. So taking my cool blue, I'm going to dilute it. Same thing we were doing below. Wiping it off a bit. And then we can just kind of test it on areas that are a little bit off center, so don't have to worry about making mistakes. Okay. And you know what I'm actually going to do here? Just to kind of make things a little bit more interesting is I'm just going to take a little bit of the cool red and turn this into a little bit more of a purple. Just slightly different color. Let's get a little more water on here. This could all go south very quickly here. So we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll experiment. So rubbing. This is There's a lot of paint on there. So let's see. There we go. And we'll just see the original here. I mean, this is just super, super subtle. I'm just sort of like scrubbing in here. So this paintbrush just barely has like any pigment on it whatsoever. And I don't even know how well that's showing up on the screen. But for me, I like it because I, there's just like a super subtle hint of some color in there. Same thing, got some more paint on my brush. Where else could we put this? Like it's almost one of these things you won't, you probably would be hard pressed to see what I'm doing unless we sped this up on like a time lapse. Maybe because right now it's like I don't know, I don't know if I saw any change. But we speed it up and you see. Oh, I, I do see it's kind of darkening down a little bit there. I've gone a little bit heavy on that. Maybe I need to kind of back off up here. I don't want to go push it too much. That's why it's kind of nice just to, you know, you, when you when you do this kind of a technique, is you want to just take your time because I think part of the sometimes people get this urgency of wanting to get it done as quickly as possible, and then that's usually where things kind of take a turn for the worse. I'm also going to take this same color <laughs> and put it down here in the ground a bit. Take that same color, I'm going to put it on her body as well. <laughs> her, uh, 15 month old daughter, so it sounds like she's turning into an eagle. It's got some an eagle 
cry. Okay. <sighs> okay, so let's I'm just gonna try to speed things up a little bit here. Which means as I speed things up, the chances are that, that I might do something I'm not happy with increase but then also the potential that I do something that I am really happy with or there's also that possibility as well that I do something that really surprises me okay I think I need a little more. Now we need to get some deeper greens in here. So let's go, I'm going to go back to the cool blue, warm yellow. Get a bit of a, do a bit of a dry brush thing in here. So we got this nice green. Sort of tapping around. Scrubbing a bit. I'm going to take this same thing and apply it down into... Painting below here you know if that paint especially doing what we're doing if it starts to kind of really dry a bit then getting some water in here just to activate it and scrub it out works kind of well You know, so a lot of the things we've been working on for the past like 20 minutes they don't have the same satisfaction as these kind of the big initial brush strokes where we're laying things in and there's that it's just really satisfying to do that a lot of this stuff is like very subtle kind of adding these delicate little textures that are really important but less immediately visible. Okay. Okay, I feel like her face and hand need to get a little bit darker, so let's put a little bit of warm blue back on top of there. Popping a little bit too much. So just get some water on here. All right, you see how it just kind of takes that down? So I think part of this painting is you look at it and you may not see this woman down here at first or the thing in the sky and it's kind of and you'd see I, mine is much more is certainly brighter in fact I might go back in here 
get rid of, not get rid of, but just scrub some of it down a bit and go, in fact, let's do that right now. So we'll do a, it's harder to do a dry brush with a bigger brush. Let's see. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into the sky with the cool blue and let's get, tone that down a little bit. Of water on my brush here. Okay, so I got a real wet brush and I got a bunch of paint there should I need it. Okay. I'm going to take it, rub off on here, and then let's just go over this surface, kind of scrub down. So it's almost like I'm scrub. I, I am, in fact, scrubbing a little bit of paint off the surface. That's better. Not quite as intense. Okay, so we'll finish. Uh, how much more do I want to do down there? I think I do want to do a little bit more of this blue down here. So I'm taking my warm blue now. And we'll do the same sort of thing we just did, but to the... Oh, so you got to be careful because I'm literally taking some of the paint off of the surface here. It's sort of like everything down here is like watercolors, and I'm kind of turn reactivating some of the paint. Feel better about that. I think I want a little bit of cool blue in the corner. Just taking now a little bit of cool blue and washing over some of this here. It's going to cut a little bit of the purpley quality out of what I've got kind of going down here. So you see there's this area right here. That happened because I was scrubbing it away and I literally scrubbed off some of the paint that was there and it lightened back up. So, gotta be careful, but that's what happens. Okay, so now I'm gonna just kinda leave the bottom for a little while here and we'll go up into the, up here. So what I, I need is some, um, Red. So I'm going to take some red right out of the tube. 
and into these areas. Again, you don't have to paint it exactly like his. You have permission to, to explore and play. and You can see mine is not exactly like his either. Okay, where else? I think we need a little bit of orange, actually. So I'm going to take my cool, or my warm red and my warm yellow. Mixing those together. Okay, we don't have a lot of orange in here, but I want don't want it to just be all by itself. So I like to kind of if I use a color, spread it out a little bit elsewhere. And in fact, I think I want to put a little bit of this orange right there, which is, um, I'm going to take my, I'm going to do dry brush here, get some paint on my brush. Let's wipe that off and then come right in here. Okay, and just a little bit of that color in a few key places. Whoops, that was a little much. Just okay. Um, now there's a little bit of some darker red in here. So let's take a little bit of the warm blue and the warm red. Should we mix it right into here because we'll get a brown we take the warm yellow, warm red, warm blue together, we're going to get a brown. And we just add a bit of slightly darker red in here. Okay. Now I feel like the last thing we're gonna do is just we're gonna do a little bit of outlining in here, into the into the plant, and I think we're we're almost done. I so again, if if you wanted in this area, you could use a sharpie. I've got hundreds. Let me see. I got one close by. Like you could use. A sharpie. You could. In fact, maybe I should do that. Maybe should we use pencil or pen in here, as opposed to a paintbrush? Do a little bit of multimedia stuff. Yeah, let's do something a little bit different. We're trying to learn new things, right? So. Let's just move this out. What kind of color should I use? I want something. Again, you could use, you could mix. I'll, maybe I'll show you. I'll do a little bit of both. We'll do, we'll do a little bit of both. Okay, so I'm going to try to find a pretty dark blue. I've got lots of colors here. Let's get a few different blues. Maybe I'll get a, a red. Brands of, of colors in here. Let's see. Um, we'll take one black just in case. Okay, so we got some pencil crayons. Let's just see how well this works here. So everything's pretty dry. 
So I'm also going to sharpen this. So I can take this pencil and kind of just start drawing right in. Right? And it it looks like a paintbrush stroke. Right? It some it takes a little bit of time to kind of build up some of this. Let's let's zoom in here. So, you know, he's got a bunch of these kind of little marks for the leaves on the outside. Just making sure I'm not going to be stamping things all over here with my, my, my hands that are dirty. Right, so just as a, just so you can see, mostly what I'm doing is kind of marks like this, right? He's got these leaves, right? So trying to add some of those kinds of things in here. And I can do this right inside the painting itself. Um, one thing just to keep in mind, right now I'm using a water-soluble colored pencil, which means if I start putting any kind of paint directly over top of here, I run the risk of it, of it running and blending. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Another way would be to take some paint. Let's uh, zoom back out here. Get a paintbrush. And if I take some of the cool blue, let's do this over here. Sorry, cool blue and warm blue. We mix those together. We'll just sort of make like a hodgepodge of different colors. Well, look at that. Look how quickly that went nice and dark right certainly darker than anything else on here and the more colors we add into here the just the the darker it's going to get right okay so let's squeeze some of that off here clean this brush off and then I'm going to use a fairly uh, small brush and come on there we go and let's zoom in again on here oops all right so we can do You know, potentially you could draw things out with just a pencil and then go back over top of them afterwards. Or you can do a combination thereof like I'm doing right now. Now there's a lot of detail in his painting. I don't think I'm going to do all of it. But one thing you can do that will work really well is just sort of like out like kind of where you see a little bit of a different color is just sort of adding a little bit one of these marks around there to kind of 
a little separated a little bit. And it kind of looks like you've done it deliberately. It's part of the, the shape of this flower. Sometimes it's also just these little dots and dashes. Uh, and ideally we would be using maybe a few slightly different colors. So if you're, while you're doing this, you slightly, you just add a little bit of different color in here as you go. So you got a little more red or blue or yellow. That would also be really nice too, because then it'll, you'll it'll just add more complexity to that painting. A few little dots kind of work well. So this is going to take maybe I think we'll be done in about let's say ten minutes. Because I think the a, a good application of all these little dots and things around on here are, is really going to bring this painting home. It will also kind of act as a little bit of a as a as a barrier or a defense to anyone who thinks that it looks really simple and sloppy and childlike. You know, these little tiny details like this kind of make it look like, oh, well, a little kid couldn't, couldn't do that. So this is the work of a genius. I don't know, this I find also very satisfying because you, know, you start with all these kind of little blobs and dashes and it just sort of feels like kind of haphazard, like you are just being a little kid. And, and when you start going back over with a little bit of a darker brush and you start outlining things, it really helps make the colors pop. And it kind of makes it also look like there's you you had a, a a plan from the beginning and now it's your kind of the everything sort of just coming together is at the very very end like a, a chess match or something you've you've drawn people into this into this trap and now they're you've got them right where you want them Uh -huh. Reaching across, I could turn it. I should let's just turn the canvas around here. Um, let me get this out of view. I don't know 
this is helpful and all. Now, you know, when I'm painting upside down, I can't really tell, how, you know, if everything is turning out the way I want it to. So it's often a good idea just to take a couple seconds every once in a while and to do a quick little, to turn it around and, and see if, how things are progressing. So you don't go too far down one direction or the other. Let's back all this out here and see where we're at. Okay, pretty close. I think I just want a few more kind of things in here. In the white areas. And you can see now with just those little, they're a whole bunch of tiny little lines, but now they're sort of taking our the most of our attention, right? Because a lot of previous to that, these other things were really drawing our attention. Now we've got some of these darker lines outlining this. The, the flowers become way more distinct than they ever were before. And now we uh, are, the first thing we probably see is the flowers. And then maybe we see this person here. And then I think um, Chagall's intention is for this dreamy thing floating in the sky to be one of the last things we see. Now, obviously, Chagall's done a better job of hiding his than mine. Mine kind of is pr pretty visible. Um, I could continue to scrub in here with a little bit more uh, of the cool blue to darken that down if I really wanted. But... Um, not feeling pretty good. I feel like I'm almost there. I don't really see too many more things that I want to add to this. Amy says, I like yours even better than the original. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very nice. Maybe mine will also command tens of millions of dollars at auction. <laughs> Okay, I think, oh, you know what, just a little bit, what I want to do is add a little bit of white in here, or not pure white, but just to make a couple things pop back again here. So that's fam famous last words, right? I just want to do, oops, about that, let's go back to here. So last little bit here is... Let's mix a bit of white. Oops, that's got a lot of red in there. Okay. So a little bit of blue on there. Where's my tiny, tiny brush? Not pure white, because that's going to be too much, but a little bit of white. Let's see. If we put a bit of this down here. We 
she had a bit on her, her hands. I think there we could add a little bit more here. I want to be kind of careful. Not going too far. You know what? I don't know. I, I feel like maybe I don't need any that uh, if I look at his. I think it's also because his is darker. In fact, I just want to get a little bit more blue back here. I don't like how that turned out there. be careful because sometimes I start doing these things right at the end here and then I go, go overboard so like I, you know it's like they say most accidents happen within you know whatever few blocks of, of home it's always when I'm like ah almost done I'm just going to do and then <laughs> and then I, I find myself in an accident Right? That's why at the very, towards the end of a painting, it's often I get a, I get a lot more, when I'm working on my own paintings anyway, things slow down dramatically and I'm pretty methodical about what I want to do. I'll even go to the, to the point of like painting things on little pieces of paper and laying them onto a canvas or pinning them on there. And then stepping back and taking a look before I actually make that brush stroke there. Because I'm like, we're almost there. It's like, I don't know if I want to do any anything super crazy. It's, it's, uh, you see, like what I'm doing right now is, is crazy. This is not a good idea. Not, not, uh, yeah, let's just wipe some of that away because what I want is a bit of green in here hmm ah. Uh, wow, oh my goodness, I didn't even see it. Totally lost track of time. I think my wife and daughter are having dinner upstairs, and I've totally spaced out okay which is a good thing i love that when that happens when i'm painting but um i also need to get back to reality here okay i just want to darken this in here underneath these flowers we'd expect a bit more of a shadow and he does have a bit of that there so it should be a little bit darker Underneath them going into this vase. Ah, okay. I gotta. 
that is pretty... I'm pretty happy with that for a couple of hours of painting to come up with a Marc Chagall painting. And so let's put our names on the back here. If you've enjoyed today's episode, I would be honored if you were to like the video. Hundreds of people watch it every, and then there's very few people actually take the moment, the time to like the, the video. So hitting that like button would be awesome. Um, it is December. The other thing is many, many people watch these shows week after week after week, but don't subscribe to the channel. So subscribe to the channel and hit the little notification bell. I do that for content creators on YouTube that I like. And that means when I go to the subscription button, all the, the videos that I like the most pop up first by the people I'm most interested in. And I don't, that way I don't have to like search through dozens and dozens of different videos of stuff I'm not interested in. Sleeping a woman with flowers. Nineteen seventy two. Give me that painting what when he was in his seventies then? Or eighties, right? So this is it gives inspiration to all of us as we get older that we could still be making awesome, incredible, life-changing artwork well into the later years of our lives, right? And still being very productive. And I feel pretty happy to have executed this painting in the short amount of time we have. Um, I'm, it's, uh, I, I, it's such an interesting, strange painting. Of, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure. We haven't really talked about what's going on. I mean, like... Why is there this gigantic vase of flowers that is right next to her or even behind her and dwarfs her, right? It's clearly there's some kind of a dream going on here that she's imagining. And it just falls in line with a lot of his other work, which has this very whimsical, dreamlike quality where people, like we looked at the Fiddler, the Fiddler painting, which was the inspiration for Fiddler on the Roof, which doesn't seem to make any logical sense. Um, but I think that's also, again, why people really like his work, is it just feels like it's a break from reality and, um, uh, and the, the other troubling things that might be going on in our lives. We look at his work, and it's like, ah, oh, here's, here's like a fantasy I can just drift out into. So I, my hope is when you're looking at this painting on your wall after you're finished with it or you prop it up onto a shelf, that it's like it not only the content you look at and you feel oh this is like it transporting me into some other fantasy world but also the fact of like having made this artwork yourself you kind of feel like you know you're thinking about all the other problems in your life and you look at it and you're like you know what i did that painting that was pretty cool you know and if i can make that painting i could sure do a lot of other things and whether that's making other artwork or it's just solving some kind of other issue in your life that you're going through, um, I think that's one of the great things that art can teach us is that, wow, it gives us like some courage and confidence in ourselves and our ability to express ourselves and take action on some of the things that we've always wanted to do. So thank you guys for joining me and and making a painting with me if you would like to support the channel by leaving a small donation via paypal there's the link below in the video description there's also a, a facebook page that uh, was created by the demand from you guys so if you'd like to join that facebook page there's a link to that also below and you can see all the dozens of other people who are taking the class right now or have taken it or plan on taking it who are uploading their the artwork that they've made in fact today's artwork you'll probably see a few of them there already and i think it's just a really cool community that we formed together right there's dozens and dozens of people who are taking these classes 
all around the world and that's something we get to share together is these exciting paintings that we guys have made so thank you everybody for joining me again today we are uh, in a couple of uh, our next session which is next week we are going to be making a painting by pierre auguste renoir one of the another great painters of his time and uh that one is going to be that i'm super excited about that renoir is on the face of it a very complicated painter but i'm pretty confident that we can especially having done some of the previous impressionist paintings by morceau and um who else did we paint um it just totally escapes me. I think that's because I'm just hungry. But we have painted a couple of Impressionist painters before, and we can use some of those same ideas and approaches for the Renoir painting. I'm also going to create a an outline version so that you can download that and trace it onto the canvas. So at the beginning of next class, you'll be ready to go and ready to paint with us. So I think that's all I wanted to say today. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening and weekend, morning, breakfast, dinner, wherever you are on planet Earth. Thanks for painting with me, and we will see you again on our next episode. Until then, 